Morning everybody, a warm welcome back to the channel. And we are back on the roller skate as it's now been named by Mrs. Mectech. <laughs> and this is probably a long awaited video because believe it or not, out of all my cars, this one is the most popular as far as views is concerned anyway. So today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of uh, maintenance on it. Um, it did, or it does need a service. And when I got it, it was on the last MOT that said that it needed front discs and pads now I haven't actually changed them yet and it didn't come up on this MOT so I don't know if they were lying or what but anyway <laughs> we have got Castrol G uh, GTX oil Bosch air filter spark plugs oil filter Daco drive belt because it's a little bit squeaky when it starts up from cold and we've got Brembo pads and Balkenbeck brake discs now at this point I must say a good big thank you to my friend Craig who kindly got me these brake discs. I wasn't expecting it. He's, all, he's got a 107 and he got some new discs for his and he recommended these and I said, oh, they look good. And he got me some without me knowing. So I must say massive thanks to Craig. Big thumbs up to you. Um, so yeah, that is what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna get this up in the air, get the oil drained and then go through the whole thing and uh, give it a bit of love. Let's crack on. Radio, this is the first time I've actually been under this car since I've owned it and I'm pleasantly surprised it looks all nice and dry barring this little bit of weeping here um, everything's easy accessible which is great so if you are um, starting out in your car journey and you want something simple to work on and to service yourself this is an ideal candidate you've got the oil filter right there you've got the drain plug right there it's so simple um, and looking underneath the car down there, the floor pan looks to be in excellent condition. It's also a little bit rusty, but the actual floor pan and there's no rust on the seals or anything like that. I'm trying not to get bars on the screen, but yeah, it looks really, really, really good. So I'm really, pretty, really quite chuffed about that. Um, so yeah, the first thing we're going to do is get the oil drained out. And once the oil's drained out, we can get the oil filter off. So I'm going to start by undoing this sump plug which is probably a 13 mil nut or a 12 mil nut knowing it's french or to uh, japanese i should say and go from there to see what the oil say the oil's in i'll come back to you in a second radio it's actually a 14 mil nut so let's get this cracked off uh, now which way it's always a bit difficult when you're trying to do it the wrong way around because you're always end up trying to do it up and then oh not the camera I like to get bars on the screen. Let's see what sort of condition this is in. So if it's the opposite way around, you've got to envisage that you're doing it up rather than undoing it, and then it will undo. <laughs> if that makes sense. Well, that looks pretty black. So I don't know when this was last uh, was serviced or oil change, I should say, but. It looks like that's in need of a, a decent oil change, so we'll let that drain out and then I'll come back to you when we get the oil filter off. Okay, as you can see, the oil has slowed to a drip now, which is how I like to leave it when I'm doing an oil change, so it's not got a constant stream of oil coming out anymore, it's just a drip. One thing you must remember to do when you do your own service, put the oil plug back in, because otherwise you end up dumping oil all over the driveway. And I'm pleased to say I've never done it, but it's always a first time. <laughs> so make sure you make a conscious uh, decision, not conscious decision, conscious effort, I should say, to put the sump plug back in, because then you know you're gonna be all right. There we go, that's in there nice and tight. Let's get a cloth. Give that a little wipe over, get the drips off. Now the oil filter, which as I said is here, should just undo by hand but they can become tight over time so you may need to use an oil filter remover yeah that's pretty tight so I want to get my oil filter remover which is this here 
It's like a three pronged affair that goes onto your ratchet and we'll get that undone. Grab me, grab me ratchet here. And that one. So you just twiddle that round until it obviously grips on like that. Get your ratchet going the right way, obviously. It can be a bit tricky to get it started sometimes, but it does go. There it goes. And keep the pressure on it, because otherwise obviously your ratchet will wind back. There we go, it's undone. And hopefully, when you undo it, all the oil that's in it will drip into your bowl on the floor. Like that, hopefully. A little bit on the driveway where the wind's blowing. The wind stopped blowing. Yeah, that oil is pretty mucky. As you can see there. And it's going everywhere. This was long overdue by the looks of it. I don't know when it was last done without checking the history. I know it had spark plugs when I just before I bought it, but I don't know whether it had an oil filter change or anything like that. But looks of this oil filter it looks quite old, I'd say no, and looks of the oil it looks very old. So this looks like it's long overdue, which is a good thing to uh, get done. This uh, wind is becoming troublesome <laughs> because it's dripping, blowing the oil everywhere when it's dripping out. Right, I'll let that drain out from the oil filter housing and I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, as you can see there, I've given the oil filter housing a little bit of a wipe round. It is still dripping slightly, um, but that'll be fine. Now, with the new filter, which is here, you obviously want to make sure that that rubber ring around the edge gets a little bit of oil on it, just so that it seats nicely. So if you get a bit of the old oil on your finger, and just wipe it round like that. Just gives it a nice um, sealing surface to go onto. Just give it another quick wipe just to get any more old oil off. Like that. Not that it makes that much difference. And then you just wind the new one on. Now, when you put a new oil filter on, don't use the oil filter remover to put it on because otherwise you'll never get it off again. You're supposed to only do oil filters up by hand, as hand tight as you can get it. Like that. And that is more than sufficient. There we go. That's the oil filter changed. So that is as simple as that. So now we can go topside and put some oil in. That is as easy as it is. So if you ever wonder what I do at a service, it's not a great deal to be honest with you. Obviously they do their health check and go over everything and make sure. But if you've got a bit of savvy and you can look under the car yourself, you can look at it all yourself and see what needs changing and if anything needs changing. Um, and the actual service itself is is very simple especially on a car like this so right i want to get the camera set up top side and i'll come back to you let's carry on just uh, slid that bowl out from underneath the car and as you can see that is well dark there's no um metal in it which is obviously good and it's got a little bit of viscosity left in it but it definitely uh wanted changing as you can see all right let's uh, i'll get you set up up, to, up top and we'll carry on Okay, top side, as you can see, this is the engine oil fill. On a lot of cars, you'll find that all the bits that you need to keep checked are yellow, uh, especially on Fords and things, but on this it's not for some reason. The oil dipstick is yellow, but the actual oil engine fill is just black. Um, so that's, uh, unscrew that. Now we've got no milkiness in the cap, which is great. That means hopefully that the engine is healthy and there's no head gasket issues. Well, I know there's not, because I've been using it and it's been absolutely 100% reliable. So that's great now when you fill the oil i always find if you pull the dipstick out just a little bit like that it allows any air that's in the engine when you start pouring oil in to come out of the dipstick pipe so that obviously it doesn't glug out of here any more than it has to so i'm going to get a funnel on there and we'll put some fresh oil in it i'll come back to you in a sec Okay, as you would have seen there, the oil is now in. It's 
should take about 3.1 liters supposedly i've put about three liters in and what i like to do is start it up let it run for a couple of minutes not even that 30 seconds a minute get the oil going around get the oil filter full up then let it all drain back down again and then obviously check the level again to make sure that it's right because obviously then you know that everything's full where it should be and you're good to go so i'm going to do that and then i'll top it off again once it's uh, all drained back down again i'll come back to you in a second okay well we, i've just started the engine and just run it for a minute and while we're waiting for that to drain back down again so i might as well take this cover off and have a little look at the oil filter sorry not the oil filter the air filter i should say they're not having taken one of these off before i'm not 100 percent sure it comes off but we shall find out it's on the pig there we go let's have a look under here cool that looks pretty grubby Look at that, definitely due for a change, that one. <laughs> it should be lovely and white. If I compare it to the new one, you'll see what I mean. There you go, look, that's the new one. That's the old one, bit of a difference. And also this new one's got a rubber seal around the edge of it, which uh, I don't know what make this other old one is. Crossland is the old one. I've got a Bosch one to go in, it came with, with the service kit, so. We'll get that put in. Now I'm not going to put that in straight away because I want to take this airbox off completely to get to the plugs underneath. So I'll get that off and I'll come back to you in a second. This airbox is very easy to get off. I've just uh, done it. It's basically a squeezy clip on there which you can do by hand which goes over this inlet port at the back here. And those clips around the edge and one rubber bung here. And that's it. So it's really easy to get off. And that reveals the three core packs which is there which push directly onto the top of the spark plugs. So I'll take those out one by one and we'll change the plugs over and then that will be that done. Let's carry on. Okay, as you would have seen there, that's the three three spark plugs changed because it's only a three cylinder car. That should be more than enough time to check the oil now. Let that drain all down again and see what we've got on the dipstick. And obviously top it up as necessary. Now we are just under, well, about halfway between low and full. So I'll put a little bit more in and we'll get that topped off and then we should be good. Um, yeah, let's carry on. There we go, just top that off with a few more glugs and as you can see now that is absolutely bang on the money. So the oil's all good, spark plugs are all good. Um, we've got the new air filter to go in as I say. While I've got the air filter housing off, I'm going to look at the PCV valve, which is the positive crank ventilation valve, which is here. And they are known for clogging up and obviously not allowing the crankcase to vent. So I'm going to buzz that off quickly and just make sure that that's free moving and if it's not then give it a little bit of a clean out to make sure it's all right so i'll get that off and i'll come back to you okay this is the positive crank ventilation valve pcv valve for short it basically just pushes into the back of the uh, cam cover there and it's got one pipe which you just pull off and you should hear it rattle which it is so that is working all right but obviously while i've got it out it has got a little bit of carbon deposits and soot around it so I'm going to give it a little bit of clean up in some brake cleaner put it back in and that should be good to go let's carry on right I've just given the old PCV valve a little clean out and as you can see by that it's pretty manky inside and it doesn't look a lot different from the outside obviously but you can hear that it's going backwards and forwards even easier than it was now so that's been cleaned out lovely so I'm going to put that back on and then we'll carry on there we go, that's back installed, it took seconds. Literally just push it in the pipe, put the clip back on by hand, it's only a little springy clip, and push it back into the 
top of the rocker cover. Lovely jubbly. Okay, having cleaned the PCV valve, there are two other things that we are going to clean on this today, um, which is supposed to help with running and MPG and stuff like that. First one is the throttle body, which is held on by three 10mm bolts, one at the front, two at the back. Um, and then there's the map sensor, which is behind here. Once you get the throttle body off, you can see that. So I want to get that off. Um, there's a couple of electrical connectors which you have to take off and this throttle cable, easy enough. Um, we'll buzz that off and I'll show you how dirty it is when I get it off. And then we can get it all cleaned, get the map sensor off, get that cleaned, put it all back. And hopefully we might get a few more MPGs out of it. Not that it's bad anyway, but you never know. So I'll get that off and I'll come back to you. Let's crack on. Right, with that throttle body off, you can see that is pretty mangy in there. It's all covered in gunk and if I wipe my finger on it, you can see the, the amount of oil on it. So I'm going to give that a real good clean up. Same with the other side, give that a clean up. And as you can see in there, that is the map sensor. So that's just held on with two 10mm bolts. Once I've got this cleaned, I'll buzz that off and we'll have a look at that. Let's carry on. Okay. That's all clean inside, as you can see it's drastically different. Looks lovely in there now. I've been clean and shiny, well not shiny, but <laughs> it's almost shiny. So that should improve uh, matters, hopefully. Right, I'm gonna get that map sensor off and, and I'll come back to you. Okay, map sensor is out. Took seconds to get that out. It doesn't look horrendous, but it's pretty oily. So I'm gonna give that a good clean up as well. And we'll get it all bolted back in and then see how it runs. Let's crack on. There we go, doesn't look drastically different I know, but there's no more oil all over it and uh, should be uh, good to go back in. I'll be interested to know whether this makes any difference. So I'm going to get that bolted back in, two 10mm bolts on this one, three 10mm bolts on the manifold. The gasket's alright, I've checked that, it's still nice and pliable and soft, so that's good to go back on, or stay on I should say. I'll give the inside of that a little wipe out while I'm there before I put that back on inside here and uh, then we'll carry on. Okay, that's all bolted back down. It literally took about two minutes to do that, so it's so easy to do. I've also got the new house, a filter in the housing now, air filter, so that is ready to go back on. And then we can start it up and see what it sounds like. So that literally just goes back on now, same way it came off. You've got the pipe at the back there which you need to push on, which is under here. I can't really see it very well under there, but it's, uh, it's like a, a spring clip. So I've got that put back on, push it back into this rubber bung, get the clips back on around it. I've also cleaned, just before I put that back on, I've also cleaned the inside there a little bit so there's no dust and mank in there. And it, the cloth I used had very slight bit of oil on, which that's not necessarily is a bad thing because any dirt that is in there, that comes in there from outside, will obviously stick to the sides rather than going into the filter and clogging the filter up sooner. So that's my thinking anyway. <laughs> so I'll get that put back on. And then the next thing we've got to do is the drive belt. Let's carry on. There we go, first start after the full, full service and all those little bits cleaned. Um, I haven't done the drive belt yet, I'm going to do that in a minute, but it sounds like a Swiss watch. Got a lovely little throaty sound to these engines, really are good. Right, I'll switch that back off and we'll get the drive belt done. Okay, we're back under the car. As you can see the drive belt was on the side of the engine here and it looks a like that the alternator has got an adjuster bolt on it which you have to undo the lock bolt and undo this adjuster bolt that will slacken the belt off and then allow you to change it so it looks pretty uh, simple so I'm gonna get that slackened off and I'll come back to you radio there's the old belt off it's pretty simple to do it looks pretty old that belt which is probably a good thing I'm changing it it's not got any cracks in it or anything really but obviously it is, was squealing a bit on start up I've checked the new one it's the same length now to get it off I'll just show you again You've got a lock nut there on the side of the alternator. Obviously this adjuster bolt, you've also got on the top side a, a bolt which you have to undo, just, just loosen this one down here on the side of the alternator and that allows it to pivot. Uh, and that is literally all you need to do. And you wind the adjuster in until you've got enough slack to get the belt off, slide the belt off and then put the new one on. Simple as that. I've checked the alternator pulley and the water pump pulley, they're both quiet, so there's no squealing hopefully coming from them. So hopefully it was just a belt. We'll get that put on and then see what it sounds like. There we go, new belt is on, engine's running, sounds lovely and quiet. 
no squealing or anything like that it's all in line it's all straight running true it is really a joy to work on this little car it's so easy um, it really is good it's, it reminds me of the classic cars that I work on because it's although it's a modern car it's lovely and simple and you can do everything you want to do to it um, and as I say if you're a beginner mechanic and you, you're looking for a first car it's nothing better you can service it yourself you can maintain it yourself it really is a good little car and that is the service complete now I know I've obviously got a bit more in depth with cleaning things and whatever else you don't necessarily have to do that but it's so easy it's so easy you can do it yourself it really is easy um, I hope this has given you a little bit of inspiration into being able to do your own sort of servicing and what have you because it just it's, it's, it's save you so much money um, right so next thing we're going to do is the brakes so I'll switch the engine off and we'll get one wheel off and have a look and see what sort of condition they're in let's carry on okay having gotten the passenger side up in the air and the wheel off as you can see the brakes discs are fairly lipped on the edge and very rusty on the bits obviously that aren't used as such there's quite a lot of pads on them um, you can see in, if you look in here you can see that or not Hang on a second you can see it's got a fair bit of pads on it but obviously if we're changing the discs we'll change the pads because you shouldn't use old pads on new discs and vice versa well you can put old pads on new pads on old discs but not old pads on new discs so we'll get this off I'm not sure how it's held on I'll have a little look I think it's just those bolts on the top there we'll just pop that off and get the disc off and swap it all over let's carry on okay caliper is off it's that easy it's two 13 mil bolts which go into the back of the carrier and that literally just pulls off and it leaves the pads and the carrier on the on the actual disc itself now I rested that up there obviously you can see now how much pads they've got and they've got loads of pads on them um, it is kind of a shame really that someone's put pads on and not bother changing the discs but there we go so we've got to get the obviously if you're just doing pads all you need to do is undo those two bolts take the caliper off these pop out like that that easy look you've got these little slider plates in here which are like spring loaded so obviously we'll clean those up and make sure they're all good there's so much meat left on those pads I can't believe it it almost feels criminal to change them really but we've got all new stuff so we'll change them over anyway so if you were just doing the pads obviously you wouldn't have to take any more apart than this you just pop the pads out like that they literally just pop out it's, it's, this car is so easy to work on it's untrue um, but because we're doing the disc as well obviously we've got to get this carrier off which is held on on the back there it's got um, two bolts I would assume they're probably about 14 or 15 mil I'll double check the size in a second we'll buzz that carrier off give it a quick clean up clean these runner plates up put a little bit of copper grease in here so that the pads move in and out nice and easily then we can undo this little star drive on there which is the Torx bit rather get the disc off clean up the surface hub behind make sure it's all nice and flat and there's no rust in there so the new disc sits nice and flat and then that's it it really is that easy so I'll get this um, carrier off and then we can get the disc off let's carry on There we go, caliper, carrier, disc and pads all off and that took all of about 10 minutes, not even that. It's so simple, it really is, I'm not just saying it, it's just like a big Meccano set. If any of you have ever played with Meccano, you know what I mean. This is in pretty good condition this surface, I'm going to give it a quick uh, buzz up with a wire brush just to make sure it's clean and flat. I'll put a very fine smear of copper grease on there just so that obviously it doesn't stick when we want to take off the disc in the future you can see the back of the discs pretty lipped on this as well um, the brakes all work fine but obviously it's best practice to obviously change them if they get to that state because they are getting a bit thin so yeah I'll get this cleaned up get some copper grease on there I'm going to put a little bit of copper grease in this little hole here as well because that is the hole that holds the brake disc on 
and you have to be careful that's the little I did, didn't round off luckily but there's a Torx bit and if it's got any dirt or anything inside it that Torx bit will slip so make sure that all the crud and dirt is out of that bolt before you start trying to undo it because otherwise you'll just round it off and then you'll be in a world of pain so yeah I'm going to put a little bit of copper grease in the hole on that thread just to make sure that it winds in nice and hopefully will stay all good I'll come back to you in a minute There we go, new disc is on, copper greased up behind so it's nice and uh, sort of protected as far as getting rusty. Now these Borg and Beck discs, you can see on the box there, they've got a coating on them. See it says coated. Now hopefully that means that all the rust that's on that old one that's formed around the inner piece here and around the edge where the pad doesn't rub, hopefully on these won't happen with any luck because they've got this, this uh, silver coating on them. So that's great. Um, really, really impressed with those, they're quite good. Um, so next thing I'm going to clean up the carrier down there with a wire brush, just clean it all up, clean up all the runners, we can get that bolted back on and then we can get the new pads in. Let's carry on. Okay, caliper carrier is all cleaned, as, well I say cleaned, it's cleaner than it was, it's got all the loose rubbish off of it. And I cleaned all these, all these guides up thinking I was going to reuse them, I've just opened the brake pads up and lo and behold in the brake pads they supply you with all new little guides. So that is superb, so I'm just they just pop off, so I'm just going to get a flat bladed screwdriver, pop them off put the new ones on and then we can pop the pads in let's carry on just um, pop those little guides off there uh, just one thing I would say is make sure when you put the new ones on that it's clean underneath because you do get a bit of corrosion on these um, carriers and obviously over time as the corrosion when rust forms it expands and it will pinch the pads on these wings um, so make sure that these are nice and clean and there's no corrosion forming a bit of dirt on mine but there's no corrosion forming on there because otherwise it will say we'll pinch those we'll pinch these and then it will obviously not allow the pads to move backwards and forwards as they should so just a little uh, tip there make sure you make sure that they're all clean I'll get these on and I'll come back to you there we go new little guide sleeves are in pads are in I've put a little smear of uh, copper grease on the flats of these guides and on the backs of the pads now you don't necessarily have to put them on the backs of the pads anymore because pads do actually come with this sort of anti squeal pad on the back of them but it's just out of pure habit um, I usually put a bit of copper grease on the back of them just to stop them squealing or anything like that not a lot just a little smear um, so yeah I'm, I need to just give this uh, caliper a quick wire brush up and once I've done that I can squeeze the piston back in um, one thing I will say is before you squeeze the piston back in on the calipers make sure you take the cap off of the brake reservoir because otherwise the fluid or the air has got nowhere to go so just pop the cap off in there look it's just in that there you go there you go just take that cap off of there so you make sure you put it back on again after but it just allows a little bit of movement um, space for the fluid in the air to go when you pull, push the piston back so I'm going to get that uh, cleaned up get that piston put back on and then I can start on the other side. Let's carry on. There we go, all back together, all cleaned, wire brushed, what have you. And now what I need to do is do the other side. Now another thing I've just thought of, make sure if you do your own brakes, that you pump the pedal back down again before you drive anywhere. Because a long while ago, in the old Cavalier over there, you can see it sitting over there the road, my stepdad did the brakes on that and he forgot to pump the pedal and when he went down the road he nearly went through a bus stop at the bottom of it <laughs> so uh, the old Cavalier nearly came a cropper luckily enough it didn't he used the handbrake and he managed to stop it but it was a bit hairy for a minute so uh, make sure you pump the pedal back up <laughs> before, once you've done your brakes on the front or on the back even as well right I'm going to get set up around the other side and I'm going to get that side done and then we should be good to go lovely jubbly
Right then, that is going to be it for this video on the little C1. We've done a full service, done pads and discs, cleaned the PCB, cleaned the map sensor and cleaned the throttle body. Um, so that should be running like a singer sewing machine now with any luck. Now hopefully this video has inspired you if you haven't done your own servicing already to have a go yourself because it's not that difficult. I've only used basic tools, a socket set, a jack, a couple of ramps. There's nothing ex mega expensive, nothing sort of mega specialist or anything like that. It's all basic stuff and it's all pretty easy. So if you haven't had a go before, maybe consider having a go yourself. You never know, you might surprise yourself and enjoy it. <laughs> now one other thing, remember to do your wheel nuts back up before you drive anywhere because otherwise if you don't want to be going down the road and the wheel goes past you because that happened to my dad a long long while ago in a mini 850 and he was going down the road and the wheel went past him <laughs> so you don't want to be doing that so remember i've got the facebook page mech dash tech and i've got instagram mech underscore tech 1985 which is for little sneaky peeks during the week and if you do like what you see maybe considering hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up on the video that would really help me out so if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures make sure you tune in again next week Cheers guys.